Welcome to Lecture Online. In this video, we're going to solve the non-homogeneous linear first order differential equation. It is in the form y prime plus f of x times y equals r of x. Non-homogeneous means that on the right side of the equation, we don't have a zero, we have some function of x. So the first thing we're going to do is write it as dy dx plus some function of x times y is equal to some other function of x. Now what we're going to do from now on is simply write f and r, understanding that those are functions of x. So the next thing we're going to bring the r over to the left side, so this can now be written as dy dx plus f times y minus r is equal to zero. And finally, let's multiply both sides by dx, so we get dy plus some function of x times y minus some other function of x times dx is equal to zero. Now this should look very familiar. This looks a lot like the following. This looks a lot like m times dx plus n times dy is equal to zero. All we have to do here is reverse these, the order of, the, of these uh, terms. And so we can write this as f times y minus r times dx plus uh, dy is equal to zero. And we know that we can find the solution of this when the partial of m, when the partial of m with respect to y is equal to the partial of n with respect to x. Then we know that this equation is exact and then we'll be able to find the solution. So in order to make the equation exact, we're going to multiply this equation by an integrating factor. So let's call, let's say that the integrating factor is a function of x. So we're going to multiply both left side and right side by the integrating factor f of x times fy minus r times dx plus f of x times dy is equal to zero. And again, from now on, we'll just write f of x simply as f, understanding that it's a function of x. So now we realize that if we take the partial of this with respect to y and set it equal to the partial of this with respect to x, we can then solve for the integrating factor. And then we're on our way to finding the general solution to our differential equation. All right. So we're going to take the partial with respect to y of the quantity f times fy minus r, <clears throat> like this. And then we set that equal to the partial of the integrating factor with respect to x. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So on the left side, notice that if I take the partial respect to y, I simply get f times f. If I take the partial respect to y of this, I get zero. So this simply becomes f times f is equal to the derivative of f with respect to x. Notice, since f only is a function of x and not a function of y, this can be written as the derivative of f with respect to x. Now rearranging terms to put this f over here and to put the dx over here, we can say that f times dx is equal to df divided by f. All right. I need a little bit more board space. I'm going to get rid of this right here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to integrate both sides. I'm going to integrate the left side, integrate the right side. I'm going to reverse the equation, put this on the left side. So that means that we end up with the natural log of f is equal to the integral of f times dx. And then if I take the antilog of this, I can write e to the natural log of f is equal to e to the integral of f times dx. And of course, this negates that. So I can say that integrating factor f is simply equal to e raised to the integral of f times dx. So here's my integrating factor that I will need to solve this equation. Now, to make things easy, we're going to let the integral of f times dx Let's let it, uh, set it equal to h. When I do that, it simplifies things a little bit. I can now write the integrating factor f as being to equal to e raised to the h power. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my original equation and multiply both sides of that equation by the integrating factor. So then I get f times y prime plus f times f of x. And again, I don't need to write f of x. I can just go ahead and times f times y is equal to f times r. Now let's go ahead and substitute e to the h power 
And remember that h is simply equal to the integral of f times dx, and f, of course, is right here. So this then becomes e to the h times y prime plus e to the h times f times y is equal to e to the h times r. Now, what we have to look at here is that this quantity can be rewritten. Okay, at this point we're going to use a very interesting mathematical trick. When we look at this, this should be able to be written as the derivative with respect to x of y times e to the h. And say, wait a minute, how can this equal that? Well, let me show you that it does. So if we take the derivative with respect to x of the quantity y times e to the h, we get the first, which is y, times the derivative of e to the h, which is e to the h, times the derivative of the exponent, which is h prime, plus the second, which is e to the h, times the derivative of the first, which is y prime. Now notice, over here we have e to the h, y prime, we have e to the h, y prime, and here we have e to the h, f times y, here we have e to the h, h prime times y. Hmm, is f and h prime equal to each other? And the answer is yes, because if the integral of f dx is equal to h, then the derivative of both sides means that f was therefore equal to h prime. So since f is equal to h prime, this is exactly the same as this, so therefore we could write this equal to this. And that means that this is equal to e to the h times r. Now what we're going to do is we're going to integrate both sides. We're going to integrate the left side, we're going to integrate the right side, and of course when we integrate this, we need a dx, and when we integrate, we'll get a constant of integration. On the left side, the integral will negate the derivative, so we end up with y times e to the h is equal to the integral of e to the h times r times dx plus a constant of integration. And finally, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by e to the h. So on the left side, we get y is equal to, and on the right side, we get e to the minus h times the integral of e to the h times r dx plus a constant of integration, which now becomes the solution to the first order or to the, fir the first order linear non-homogeneous differential equation. Now remembering that h really means the integral of f dx, this can also be written as follows. You can also write this as y is equal to e to the minus integral of f times dx Oop, I shouldn't write it like that, so f dx, like that, times the integral of e to the integral of the f dx times r times dx plus a constant of integration. So that would be another way of writing the general solution. And when you write it like this, then you realize that f here is really the function of x that we have in the original equation, and the r here is equal to the function of x we have in the equation right there. So this would be the general solution to the linear, non-homogeneous, first-order differential equation. And once we have the general solution, it becomes a lot easier to find the solution to a number of these differential equations, and I'll show you some examples of how to do that. But here we have it. This is the general form of the first-order, linear, non-homogeneous differential equation.